Well, if you're watching this video, chances are that you have been not feeling that great after the election. Maybe you feel exhausted because it was such an intense ride. Or maybe you feel completely disappointed and deflated because you were hoping for a different outcome. Or maybe you feel scared, in despair, maybe even hopeless, expecting for these next four years, and who knows, maybe even more, just to be catastrophic for many reasons. How can we go through these times without us losing our sense of self? How can we make sure that the stress and this emotional intensity doesn't overshadow everything else in our lives? How can we keep our power and not just give it away to the politics and the fighting and the grievances and all those things that are happening on an ongoing basis? What is the answer for all this stress? Now, I believe, as Albert Camus said, peace is the only thing worth fighting for. And I think that's something to keep in mind, that we should not let whatever is happening take away our ability to have peace. Now, as many of you know, my name is Friedemann, which is German, and translated that means man of peace. So peace is pretty much given to me from birth. That doesn't mean that I'm always the most peaceful person, but I think the name peace was always something that obviously was in the forefront of my mind, but also something I felt, yeah, as a as a purpose, as a goal to aim for. Now, peace is something that my father, even though he also <laughs> wasn't the most peaceful man, actually he was quite often stressed and, and also angry, but he always preached to me how peace is important when it comes to healing. See, when we are in a more peaceful place, then the body can switch into the parasympathetic nervous system and from there, it can just draw on these inner resources to boost the immune system, help with the digestion, and overall just accelerate the healing. I also believe that the parasympathetic nervous system, besides rejuvenating us, it can also bring us much more clarity because it allows us not just to have tunnel vision and look for fight or flight, but it allows us to go more deep and listen to our intuition and to our heart because it does in that stillness of peace give space for those messages or those feelings that can really help us to move forward in the way that is honoring who we are and not just making us reacting to whatever happens around us so peace is something i think we we should see as a purpose right now. And not only for ourselves or for the people that are thinking the way you know we do, but also for everyone else. Because I think that peace is necessary right now. There was so much uh, name calling and, uh, and divisiveness and, and basically shearing uh, or creating uh, this fear and us versus them thinking and uh, you know there is stress just in how this whole campaign uh, was uh, evolving and i just feel that in order for us to build the bridges between those people we may feel like how could they i don't understand what happened don't they have a greater sense of decency or a greater sense of you know, uh, importance of the environment and isn't their value system completely off that they're only focusing on the economy and all those kind of things. So I think in order to build bridges with the people that we don't 
feel in alignment with or we don't feel understood by, it is important to have peace. Because I think that's something we wish for everyone. We wish that everyone could live in this place of peace together. No conflict, no struggles, no, you know, unnecessary competition and, uh, and just blaming and shaming and judging, just being at peace. At least that's the vision that I would love to, at some point, come to flourishing here on Earth. But for that, we have to start with ourselves, obviously. And we may have to think about what is peace for us? What does it mean? Is it just the, the feeling on Sunday morning when the kids are still asleep and the sun is rising and you know, maybe there is a little coffee on the bedside table and you just don't have to do anything and you just feel relaxed. Well, that's one way of experiencing peace. Maybe peace is something you have felt in nature on a, on a hike or on a beach and you really could tune into this incredible harmony, that magical force that exists in nature and that we cannot describe, but we can feel it with every pore of our being because we are a part of nature. Even though we live in so many ways against nature and we do our best to destroy nature, nature is a part of us and we are a part of nature. So yeah, there you may have felt peace. Or maybe you feel peace when you're meditating or you are in a place of worship, when you listen to some beautiful music or see beauty in art. Maybe you feel peace when you pet an animal or you are in the garden and just attending to a flower bed or your vegetables. Maybe you also feel peace when you were upset with someone or you felt there was a struggle or a conflict or a misunderstanding and somehow you were able to resolve it. Maybe you could explain yourself or you could just say, I'm sorry. And that brought peace to the situation. Maybe you found peace through acceptance. You know, maybe there was a job loss or someone that you really care about died. Or maybe you had uh, some accident or illness you had to deal with, but somehow after the first resistance and the first shock you you actually were able to settle in and and find found peace in whatever situation you were dealing with the point is we know peace we have experienced it and and usually it feels glorious it's not always the same feeling but it feels good it it really nourishes us when we are in at peace and even the people that would see themselves as always busy and active and maybe some adrenaline junkies, when they settle down and when the noise settles and the snowflakes in their minds are coming down, they also enjoy being in this place of, of peace. Peace is something that I find is a choice, a choice we have to make. But the benefits from being in peace, first with yourself, and then you can spread this peace or widen this peace around you, the benefits are so incredibly great because they do allow you to have a complete different perspective. A perspective that is not only calm, but also clear and empowering. Because if you see all around you people getting upset and screaming and yelling and fighting with each other, and, and you can get into this, I would say, higher perspective of peace, and you can look down and you can really realize that's not necessary. That isn't really serving anyone. This doesn't really create any productive change or any healthy future. Let's step back and let's try to find that sense of peace. 
Desmond Tutu, the, the Bishop of South Africa, said that uh, in order to find peace, you don't need to talk to your friends, you need to talk to your enemies. And, uh, and if there are people that you felt like uh, you want to cancel Christmas for or just not see them for the holidays because they were obviously on the wrong side and how dare they, well, maybe one way to spread peace could be to just see them for who they are as human beings. They are not any kind of votes or political opinions. Yes, these are expressions of some aspects of themselves, maybe the most insecure, maybe the most fearful, maybe there is a little greed inside of them, but there is more. We always have so much more than our worst impulses. And looking for that, what else is there? And really connecting to that, you are not probably able to convince them that they are wrong. I think they have to find out for themselves. But you may be able to show and model what it means to just be kind, caring, compassionate, and peaceful, no matter whether you disagree uh, with what their, their choices are. And and I think that is building bridges and that is opening minds and eventually that can also open hearts. Now, how can you choose peace every day? How can you make peace like a, an inner, uh, you know, goalpost or a GPS that moves you forward? And, and for that, I think we, we really need to see peace as a practice. Now, I, I like to see peace as you know, little pockets throughout the day that I can tap into. Because, as I said, I'm not always surrounded by this beautiful peace bubble. My, wouldn't that be nice? No, I have to choose peace. And I know exactly when I don't choose peace. And then I have to remind myself, wait a second, I know where that goes. I know when I get upset. I know when I get frustrated. I know when I speed up because I feel I have so much to do so that I get everything done. I feel the opposite of peaceful. I feel stressed. I feel overwhelmed. And, and I don't like that feeling. It's not serving me and it certainly doesn't make me any more productive or at the end of the day feeling good about myself. So being in a place where Every day through vigilant observing, you can see what brings you into a state of peace. That can be a state of calmness, neutrality, a state of appreciation. It can be a state of detachment. These are all expressions of peace. As I said, peace has different flavors, but the core is like a sense of exhale and being quiet, like someone described to me the, the perfect peaceful situations is imagining a beautiful mountain meadow with sheep and some guard dogs around and the shepherds sitting there and just watching over those animals and seeing the beautiful in a forest and mountains and being in complete harmony with all of that. And that's a nice image to have when we just don't feel that peace requires us to jump into some action, but just letting everything slow down. So some of the things you may want to observe is how much do you obsess about the news or podcasts or social media, especially pertaining this post-election uh, stress? How much do you feel like, oh, this soothes me that there are people also upset or they are finding answers or they are fighting back or they are already making fun of the new administration and all these kind of things. Does it bring you peace? Does it help you to de-stress or actually does it only increase the feeling of, yeah, maybe you justify your anger. Maybe you feel like, you know, okay, this is another round of, of battling. But again, if you want to have peace 
And if you want to have clarity through peace, that may not be the best way to get there. And I'm not saying that you should be, you know, the ostrich, head in the sand, not caring for the next four years, but be informed in a way that actually makes you feel, again, more clear and calm. Because maybe it's just that you gather information than gathering opinions. Maybe it's just getting inspired to support uh, local communities or local uh, you know uh, places where they are fighting for the environment or fighting for those that uh, you know are potentially deported or or uh, you know losing uh, their uh, you know their insurance or whatever those things are so get inspired, get informed, get clear. What is your place to step into? What is your place to support, you know, other uh, movements? But don't overload yourself with the talking heads that are just, you know, enjoying riling up our anger or our anxiety. That, that doesn't really help you. That doesn't bring you peace. It's not about us versus them. And if you really think about it, we are all and this amazing spaceship called Earth. And we are all dealing with things that are the great equalizer. For example, these hurricanes that just, you know, a few months ago or weeks ago were devastating, you know, entire regions of the country. Well, that's the equalizer. And, and I think there is no escape of that. And, and we have to really find a common sense of, uh, of purpose and being able to rely on each other and believe in each other. And, and again, when we are just pointing fingers, doesn't get us there. The other thing to choose peace is also really noticing when your thoughts are spinning and you're going into, I'm so frustrated, I can't understand, and why do they do this, and whatever these things are, just put a big stop sign in your head. Really just say, no, I'm not going there. This is not serving me. I know there is a part inside of me that just feels so right to be angry. It feels so you know, emboldened to now also be as nasty as the other side has been. And no, you know, I think there is something about choosing how you want to be, what your values are, what's important to you. And if those thoughts are not in alignment with who you really are or who you would want your children to be, then don't give them power because that is giving your power away. Every ounce of anger or frustration or despair is giving power away. And that power is what you need right now more than ever. And if you have, you know, conversations, choose your words wisely. Don't choose words like that kills me or this is the end or they are so stupid. You know, all these words that are just creating more release of stress hormones and creating more dis-ease inside of you. Just switch them around. You know, you could say uninformed or you could say that, uh, you know, there's going to be a challenging time. You could say that this is something that you're preparing yourself for. But you know that as a community, we can get through this. You can say that you believe in the better angels of the people in general. And you believe that somehow things will turn around because everything is temporary. Nothing is permanent. And, and that is something also to always hold on to. So choose the way you want to think about something wisely. Again, it's not about being in denial. I'm not about denial, but I'm, I'm about being calm, clear, concise, and ideally detached emotionally from what is happening and just being much more open for the possibilities on making something positive out of this. I do believe that when there is an energy pushing you know, the opinions or the country in one direction, it creates also then an energy that's balancing it out, that can bring positive out of it through greater determination or motivation or energizing a movement that otherwise would have been maybe falling asleep on the wheel. It has happened before, it can happen again. So 
I do believe this is always an alchemical process and it's up to us to bring the gold forth even when we are feeling like we're in the middle of the fire. And then you can also choose peace through finding always these little touchstones of peace. You know, I have a little pond with some goldfish in it. Right now, my favorite place, you know, you hear the water, just like from a fountain going in there, and you see the fish and the plants and some birds that are drinking from it, and I have a bench, and I'm sitting on that bench, and wow, <laughs> sometimes I cannot even get up from this bench. It feels so relaxing. It's unbelievable, and it, it really shows me that uh, I'm like a sponge who's soaking up this beautiful energy that exists there. That's always there. I need to just tap into this battery of peace and, and bring it into my system. And I'm sure you have those places too. You know, for you, it may be a smell. You just know whenever I light this lavender candle, oh, I feel so good. Or whenever I look at this picture of our, you know, last vacation when we were sitting under the palm trees and looking out in the ocean, I can put myself back into this place and I feel so relaxed because I hear even the waves splashing on the beach or whenever I hear this music, this one artist, that voice or whatever it is brings me just down immediately. Or whenever I ask my partner to massage my feet, I am in peace bliss and, and that in itself is something that really, really gets me into this more calm and stable place. Try to find these little habits, these little routines to bring peace into your life. And when you do this, you will notice that your mind, especially the subconscious, will look for more opportunities to feel at peace. Because right now your mind has been all focused on the others and the ones that you were supporting. Your mind has been all about winning. And so it was just finding other, you know, articles or again, podcasts or, or on social media, some reels and that are supporting that what you want. And now that it's over, you have to give your mind this little, you know, uh, truffle dog, uh, another job and that job can be looking for something that makes you feel at peace and that again is a choice what is it what i can daily feed myself with that brings me peace can be also something that you would say well what doesn't make me feel peaceful is the clutter in my bedroom or what doesn't make me feel peaceful is the emptiness of my refrigerator and then you're just gonna choose to do the things that have brought distress in themselves and then you go and feel more peaceful because you have taken care of yourself and it looks better and then you may even take a bath with some little bubbles and uh, you feel more at peace because of it see i think we are exhausted we are tired and and for many people it's interesting I heard many people talking about that there is a, a lack of, of direction, a lack of purpose in their lives. And, uh, and I agree. I think in many ways we are complaining on a really high level. And I know that things were expensive. And I know also that people are dealing with, uh, you know, money issues and, and uh, have to have two or three jobs. I understand. But then there is also this survival consciousness that comes for it. And life is more than just about surviving. I think life is ultimately to be enjoyed and to be savored, even if we don't have all the means to get everything we want. But one thing we can do is to focus on the things that are available to us. And peace is one of them. And, and learning to appreciate when we do have peace. That is certainly the gift that we can always give ourselves. And, and I do believe when we are at peace, we have a much easier a time to also love. And when we love, then obviously we are filling ourselves up and, uh, and can bring more joy and happiness in the world. And it's not 
all just about how much we have on the account to be able to afford X, Y, and Z. And I am all for being able to have financial stability and abundance, but I also do believe sometimes our priorities have been shifting so much more on that and we have given up on looking for things that are really truly meaningful because our body responds to it. You know, we have a wisdom in our body that says what's good for us and what's not. Stressing out is not good for us. Finding peace, going into this parasympathetic nervous system is good for us. And so that's something that I feel could be one of the directions, one of the greater purposes that especially in this time that doesn't feel peaceful, really make a difference. Because imagine there would be thousands and millions of people, little sources of peace, calm, grounded, centered, appreciative, open-minded, open-hearted. Don't you think if these people would then also really model this to others and maybe I don't know, each of them makes two or three others also feel at peace. I mean, that could be a wave throughout the country and maybe throughout the world. I think this is possible. And I think it's something that doesn't require necessarily for us to sit in a pillow and meditate for hours. Of course, if you want to do that, that's, that's wonderful. But it may not always happen. You can find peace in other ways. Peace, the joy in finding it and the choice in doing it every day is in itself creating a foundation that is so solid that we can go through this time and not lose ourselves but actually maybe even find ourselves and realize that no matter what we can always choose how we want to feel about ourselves and how we see ourselves in all of that. And that brings me to the last point, which I do sense that this can also be something that a time when we are looking for peace that can open us up to those teachers that have really talked about peace, you know, learning more about the, the great ones, you know, Dalai Lama, Pema Chodron, you know, Jesus Christ. I mean, certainly a, a person who was all about peace and, and just going on to a philosophical or spiritual quest and really understanding those masters, you know, those that were teaching metaphysics and religion or spiritual beliefs. You don't have to subscribe to any of it, but just nourishing yourself with what others have figured out, maybe even a long time ago. But since history repeats itself over and over again, it's always up to date. So just being more open also to learn from those that have really acquired wisdom. And maybe they have acquired wisdom because they were struggling. They were dealing with difficult circumstances. Thinking about Bonhoeffer, who was a, a priest, German priest who died in the concentration camp and uh, who had said this, you know, really beautiful uh, sentence that even if he would know that he dies tomorrow, he would still plant an apple tree today. And, uh, and that is something where I just feel inspired to see how someone who was already, you know, facing death never gave up on hope, knowing that he will not benefit from this apple tree, but others may. And so maybe whatever peace you're creating right now will really benefit you and others in the future. So learn more about peace, learn more about ways to have a wider perspective and also just know that this is a choice we can make. We don't have the power to change everything right now, but we have the power to change how we perceive it and what we do with it. Hi, Dr. Friedman here. Thank you for tuning into my YouTube channel. If you're interested in learning more about fear and anxiety, here you'll find guided meditations, webinars, and interviews with some of the most renowned experts in the field of empowerment. Delve into the over 230 videos and more to come every week.